We are live, we are here, we are back, sitting down one-on-one, -on -one, just a round table, two chairs, and two people sitting down, ready to digest, uh, dig in, yep. and uh, com conversate, man. We are here, back. My name is Nate Poole, you know the deal, Monsters Dance, and I am here with world-renowned creative director, show designer, choreographer, whose fo footprints can be found in all outlets of the, of the artistic entertain entertainment industry. It's truly, truly an honor, the one and only, Nick DeMora. What's going on? What's going on, bro? I feel like there should be people in here clapping. I know, I know. I know. That's, that's the applause line I told right Andy there. we should start charging for tickets for this. Right, correct, correct. I'm always a businessman. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just always kidding. a businessman and always on your hustle. Only want 5%. Right. I'm just kidding. Which is a perfect lead-in to <laughs> building up to this. Okay. I wrote Nick DeMora down. Uh -huh. And just right away, those words that come to mind, man. Hustle, ambition. Yeah. Hard work, pulling yeah. no punches. Yeah. Right? Like, I feel like that has been your, your signature, your staple. Like, you were the hardest worker in the room. Mm -hmm. You've always had this um, relentless ambition and drive to get the job done, to elevate. Um, you know, I think there's the famous story that you've told many times about, like, getting coffee for nappy tabs. Like, yeah. you know, just get me in the room right. and then watch me work. Yeah, yeah. Um, would you say those are accurate descriptions? Yeah, I always say that. And I, I mean, I always joke around, like, about, like, I'm not lucky ever, right? I feel like some people get lucky a lot of the times. Yeah. Things kind of just come to them, and, and it's, a, it's awesome, and they deserve it, I guess. But, like, for me, I've never just been lucky. Everything I feel like I've had, I've had to, like find another way in or or serve somebody or right. like do the first few opportunities for like no money or less money than people were getting for that job but right. but then once i got in there and started you know in, in every one of those departments whether it's like choreo or creative direction or production design uh i had to like literally prove myself every time at those places and then like then ask for what i deserved after yeah. almost a little delayed but where does where like, does that come from I mean, where does that work ethic, where does that, that hustler's mindset? I think it just like how you grow up has a lot to do with it. Yeah. You know, I grew up with a single mom and four kids and I was the only boy. So I had to like, I pretty much got away with everything too. But yeah, like, yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I was the one out at night working and, and hustling my, my jobs and, and things. Right. Things. Yeah. Uh, yeah and to, things. To, to get to Monsters and Absolutely. taking the train by myself when I was like 12, 13 to New York. Just right. to take classes, like I just knew what I wanted, and my mom kind of gave me. People would say probably too much freedom, but she gave me the freedom I needed mm -hmm. to go uh, pursue what I needed to do at a young age. Right. You know, I drove to Monsters with no driver's license once. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah. yeah. By any means necessary. Any means like, necessary. You're, you're getting there. I'm going. I'm training. That's what I want to do. Well, and know? I think it's it's it speaks to. Uh, Don't drive without a license. Correct. <laughs> Not yeah, yeah, Don't yeah, do yeah. That. yeah. But 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 take the inspiration of you know I think uh, you cultivate a mindset right. It's it's like an inside job. You work from the inside out. You mm -hmm. cultivate a mindset no matter if you're, you know, doing anything you can to get to a dance convention at a young age, all the way up to creative directing, designing a show, designing a tour. Yeah. Inside is that same that same brain, that yeah. same work ethic, that I same think those mentality. Same, them same things help on like the larger scale. Cause yeah, we, we you see like okay, I'm designing a Justin Bieber tour, but there you know there are budgets and there there are things. Those are there's are crazy challenges within those rooms too. Yeah. Like oh, we can't just spend seventeen million dollars. You guys only spend this much money, and you're right. like okay, I have to be creative with less money now right. or whatever award show it is. So then it you get your like bootstraps on and start thinking of like little ways to make things work on a major scale even, you right. know what I mean? So, yeah. And it's just at a different scale, yeah. you know what I mean? But the, 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 same numbers, mentality. the numbers may sound crazy to, to most people, but yeah. the, the, the mentality or the dynamics are still the same. same. How do we keep this under budget? How do we, you got, and you How have do to, you manage people, you know, at the high level, the right. same way you manage people at a smaller level, you know what I mean? I think, right. I think it's, all, it's all relative, yeah. Absolutely. So I think it's super interesting because, you know, we, especially at Monsters, we've come across a lot of, choreographers, right? We've come across a lot of dancers, but I, it's rare that I feel like someone has worn as many hats as you have and mm -hmm. successfully, right? Choreographer, creative di director, stage design and beyond. Um, how does your experience and expertise 
in one lane inform the other lane. Like I have to imagine like be, being a dancer and not just coming into it as a director, creative director, mm -hmm. informs how you design a stage, right? You've, yeah. Not only are you like, oh, this would be cool. No, it's it's functional. I've actually danced on these you know, these stages. I think that's definitely. So how do, yeah, how does that all interplay? Yeah, I think that definitely gives me a bonus a lot of the times because when I do design a stage, um, this is why I wanted to design a stage because I would be on stage and like, I'm always exiting left and always exiting right. And I'm like, why are there not better exits or better entrances? Why does the transitions look like this? Why is the show flow like this? Right. I'm on stage, I feel it. So I'm a performer first. And then so when you get to be in control of the, of the whole picture, it's like, okay, we need, I think on Purpose Tour, I had 16 lifts on the floor. So like we barely walked off, just walked off a stage or walked on a stage. It was right. up in the moment, down, sneaking off the lifts would already be down and you had to jump in the holes, like Easy. stuff like that. Like, so it was like, just those being performer, knowing what I wanted to do on stage that I thought would be, even be fun and I get to make other people do, you know what I mean? Right. So, and then, you know, when I first went on tour with Justin in like whatever, two, God, 2012, it was like, feels like I was forever ago. feels like forever. It was yeah. forever ago. <laughs> yeah. But uh, like when I was just a dancer, I was so I once I got, I got super inspired by the whole production aesthetic of everything. So I was doing load ins and load outs with the crew guys at four in the morning just because I was like, yo, teach me some stuff. I want to learn what you're doing, you know, and then that taught me everything I needed to know by already being on the road. So right. then I was like, oh, I think I can do this now. So that that gave me kind of like the inspiration to start pursuing design, if that makes sense. Oof. And then I, I, I booked the, um, funny story, I booked the Ariana Grande tour as creative director, or they, they were letting me pitch okay. to be the creative director. And, and I was so stupid and dumb to it, I thought the creative directors designed the stages, but they don't, there's a production designer. And then there's usually a creative director that just does the creative. Is that a collaborative effort? Or is it not Or is always. a creative director just, he, this is the stage you have to work with? Yeah, okay. so, and so I thought the creative director designed the stage. So I taught myself online in three days how to draw a stage and design a stage and just put that in the deck. And then when I submitted, they were like, oh, you designed two? And I was just like, yeah. Wow. And so I designed my first tour on accident. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so wow. then and that gave me even more like, okay, you're definitely, right. if you don't mess this up, you know, you'll be able, I'll be able to do another one for sure. So I love, uh, it reminds me, Rick Rubin, uh, you know, the guru, yeah. the all-time guru, guru. He's been on the podcast circuit right now. He yeah. has a new create book out, new on uh, creativity. But he talks about just following his creative instinct. And mm -hmm. he, he says, he said more than once that, if I, if there was some, if I couldn't find what I wanted or what I liked, yep. I, then I knew it was just it was my role to create it. Right? Yep. And it just made me think of it. You were like, why are we walking on and off stage, stage right and stage left all the yeah, time? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I, you know, if something's not out there in the world. Like let me step up and be the one. Yeah. You know what I mean to put it in there. Yeah, I think it starts with like, and, and no offense to anybody, but like for me, I just always thought I was like, I think I can do this better. You yeah. Know? And so I was like, let me try and do it better. You right. Know? And then I'm trying to do that now with new things, with like directing. That's what I want to do next. I want to start directing. So I, I watch things sometimes. I watch music videos sometimes and, and movies and things. And I'm like, I think I could do this better. And so now I'm in a, a new challenge and a new path right. of like, okay, well, let me do this. Try and do it better. Well, and it speaks, I, I think that's, it's very on brand for you, yeah. right? And I, that's one, <laughs> one of the notes that I had written down was this idea of success, right? Mm -hmm. Like so many people would look at your resume and look at what you've done and what you've accomplished. And I think when you're younger, it just gets back to that idea of the grass is always greener, yeah. right? Like somebody looks at what you've done and be like, he did it. You don't need anything He's done else. it. Yeah, 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 right. He's done it. He's yeah. done everything, you know? And I think uh, success is the idea that that word or that idea can be a misleading concept, right? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, there's, you know, it's the platitude of like, you never really arrive. No. It's just this constant journey, this constant evolution that ebbs and flows. Yeah, um, I mean, I feel that I literally will design a tour show that takes like six months to put together. And as soon as the f last song is finished, I'll be like, well, what do I do now? Really? Every time. And I'm like, and then my friends are like, stop, enjoy the moment, enjoy the moment, man. We just did the show. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I get it. But like, that, it's done now. It's out. It's done. Yeah. I'm like, oh, what's next? I got to get better at that. Like, I was just going to say, is there maybe a I workaholic do, aspect? I, yeah, that's yeah. the workaholic in me. And even right now, like, you know, tour just ended again. And I had like a few months off. And my friend was like, what's up, man? I'm like, oh, I'm bored out of my mind. They're like, yo, you just worked for like two years straight. Chill out for a little bit. And I'm like, I don't want to chill. Like, I want to go make right. something. I want to go create something. But 
Yeah. And so do we do we get that do we, that's the that's the question, right? Do we get does the world get all of Nick Demora's creations and what you've put out there to so many fans and so many people? Do we get that without the relentless Work ethic. I don't do you know think what I mean. Do. It's like I, it's, it's tough. It's a tough. People love to say. I, I do think life in general is about balance for sure. And I was like, okay, yeah, but I just did two months off. Like I'm ready to work again. Like right. that's that's enough of a break for me. Yeah. You know. So, um, but at the same time, I find uh, when working with people, like even when I hire people, I I, I like people who have a sense of urgency yeah. for a situation or a problem. Like when if I get called like today. Yep. about a tour to submit, I will have that submission done by tomorrow. I'm not gonna be like, yeah, that w when's the deadline? Friday? Okay, it'll be there by Friday. No, like, I'm going upstairs tonight. I'm opening my computer, I'm rendering, I'm, I'm working on it immediately. Immediately. You know what I mean? Like, I have that type of sense of urgency when it comes to, like, my work. When it comes to your work, where is the moment, where is the reward in all of it? Or is it is it constantly reward. just the, the the slog and the and the fight through the through? No, I think the is, where is the moment where you sit back? Do you do you get a moment? Do you sit back and go, wow, like this is Yeah, I definitely do. Okay. I definitely definitely have those moments too, like but they're quick. Okay. They're probably too quick. Um, yeah. but like for me it's like the process is that moment for me. Like being able to go to rehearsal every day and work on a project that's bigger than you. You know, it's not even for you, right? Like I, I know we get um, a lot of praise and stuff like this, but at the end of the day, I'm doing this for the artist, right? The artist is entrusting me to help their vision, my vision, or just their vision, execute their vision, whatever the, the deal is with whatever artist. Yeah. And my goal at the end of the day is like, are they happy? Like this last tour, for instance, like everybody at rehearsal, the production rehearsals before like Justin even gets there, they're like, this is crazy. This is amazing. Like all this stuff. And I was just like, uh-huh, mm-hmm. Right. But like at the end of the day, I need him to like it. Like yeah. he's my client, right? Like he's my boss. So Correct. I was like not hyping myself or listening to anyone else's hype. Until well, yeah, it's like your job to never get too excited. Yeah. You know what I mean? You I, can't I gotta, get overly, yeah. you know? So he walked in and obviously once he loved it, I was like, okay, we can go celebrate now. Yeah. You know, like, cause at the end of the day, it's not even for me, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, just the, uh, speak a little bit on the uh, ideas and misconceptions about, you know, I, I think people hear the term choreographer. They hear the term creative. I want to be a creative director. Mm -hmm. I want to be a choreographer. Um, what, you know, maybe speak a little bit to like what it really takes, right? If you yeah, want to take I, that. Because I, I feel is... like people see this natural progression of dancer, choreographer. They want to keep, you know, working Well, that if Well, you, if you really, really look at like the very beginning, like the reason why I wanted to become a creative director was I saw people like Jamie King, Kenny Ortega, and Adam Shankman, who were choreographers who transitioned themselves into these major positions and major roles, right? But like now, like in the world we live in, everybody can just write down that they are something right. that they're not. And with that, no fact check, really. There's like no resume, you haven't creative directed <laughs> right. anything. Right. And that's why for me, like, I wasn't a creative director until I creative directed the Teen Choice Awards for Justin Bieber in 2013. Now I'm a creative director. I did it. I did like the biggest artist on one of the biggest award shows yep. I creatively directed. So like, I think it's just a word that kind of get tossed out. And then the reason why people are not lasting is because as you come into like the you're dealing with an executive producer at ABC or MTV or Viacom or all this, and they're calling you and they're asking you questions and you don't even know how to answer those correctly. Right. You know, do you know how to put a budget together? Do you know where to go? Like, oh, I want to build a 30-foot table made out of chrome so it's reflective. Okay, well, do you even know what vendor to call for that, to build that? Do you know how much that will cost, roughly or not roughly? Like, right. people are just like, oh, yeah, we're going to wear red. <laughs> like that's not being cre to me that's not even creative right now right. creatively directing is like yo directing like you have to man you have to like really pull all these people you're just like a liaison to every department the lighting department like how do you tell him what light it is that you need moved yeah. or he's gonna make him walk up and point at it you know like 
Do you it's, know yeah. what's capable? It's, it's a lot of things like that that people don't know, which is why like I always say people need to serve people because like what you were saying with Nappy Tabs, me grabbing coffee, yeah. I got to be on set at American Idol for a whole season with them and I really got to just be like... And just a sponge. Just a sponge. Taking, just taking look at everything. In. Hear what the producers were saying to them. You right. know, knowing like, oh, like why are we not just doing all this? Like, oh, well, that's not even in the budget for this right. type of show. Like, this right. is the budget for this type of show per performance. Like, it's just all those And what's interesting is I think in a day and age where there is more access to education and training than ever before, yeah. all these online training platforms, and it's the information age, mm -hmm. there's no course for that. No. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. that is like truly like you need to be Creative hands directors, up. To even to like, be in a room where yeah. that, those conversations are happening yeah. is super rare. But even and, with creative directing, like it's like this made up position, right? It's just like someone with cool ideas that you want end of the day but then executing I was those. just gonna say you could have all the ideas you want yeah but executing those correctly and, and that's a whole nother thing and then like that's why for me even after career directing a lot like you know you're so I don't know it gets a little weird at times because of that and the, you're, you're I'm like why am I competing with uh the creative directors that have never creative directed you know right. and so that's why I moved into stage design because you just really can't fake that Right, <laughs> you know, literally, literally, you really can't fake that. I can do that forever. I, it's, I'm still in the same industry that I love. Yeah, you know, I really love when I get hired to do all three because then the show is like super cohesive, super consistent. You know what I mean? So you you've had moments where you have your hand in all three. All yeah, three I mean, a couple. To, I mean, Justin, I do all three. God, yeah, man. Yeah, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, but like, there, there's I'm probably cool there can't be it. that many people out there that have that have done that. No. I mean, may, I mean, yeah. there, I'm sure there's some, but like I mean, to, this tour. I mean, J Johnny helped me with uh, came in with choreography and stuff, and I'll bring in a few people. Yeah, but like yeah. purpose tour, I did like 90% of the choreo, the stage design, and the creative. Yeah, that's wild. That was a lot. That's why this time I was like, let me step back on one a little. You know? Yeah, yeah. You just uh, the phrase we just brought up. Um, you can have all the cool ideas you want, but executing is a is a whole different ball game. Yeah, everybody and think, has great ideas. Yeah, and I everybody, think yeah. you know, there's that old saying, "Good intention." Uh, the the path to hell is paved with good intentions, right? Yeah. Like you can have all the ideas you want, but it's just that right there. I think is the ethos, the microcosm of like what makes Nick Demora Nick Demora. Like you, from day one, like have had in, inspirations and and um, ideas, and you know, you saw what you wanted, but like you had this relentless drive to just keep going after it day yeah. in and day out yeah, yeah, whether yeah. it was driving to monsters all the way to some of the biggest tours in the world yeah. um it's the number one thing i respect about you man like oh, really man you. like your, your work ethic your drive your hustle is i, I think it's, it's like, second I, to I, none it I, really uh, is you start to realize i think I also too like i always tell people even in dance class like um i'm like stop putting me on a pedestal like I know, I'm like, you look at me and I'm like, oh, I've done all these amazing things. And for, it had clicked for me when I was younger taking class too. It was like, they're all, everyone's in class and there's like this slight intimidation all always. So it's like a mental thing in the class where I'm like, stop putting me on this pedestal because you keep looking up at me. As soon as you start to like, remember that I am just another human being who just worked harder than you. Yeah. You'll start to shift your perspective and start to work harder. And then that perspective, I think it does something for your mental you know, I think this is also mental, not just physical. So right. I think that's like a big thing for me. And I used to always look at everybody and be like, wow, that dude's a billionaire. Like, yeah, but he's just, man, that dude just worked his ass off. Absolutely. To be honest, right? Like Absolutely. he's not a superhuman. Right. He maybe had more income or family, some things that different helped him. Yeah. Different circumstances. We all have our own but circumstances. But there's been plenty of people that have had nothing and made something out of themselves because they just did it. And it's there. We're all, we're all human at the end of the day. So like for me, I just take all the risk and I just love to, I love to be uncomfortable. Yeah. I, I really we, do. Like we, we never, preach about it in class. Yeah, have it all I love the time, being, man. It's I the love, only way, it's the only growth. I love going into the unknown, dude. Like I've never directed a, I'm sorry. I've never directed, we'll edit that. <laughs> you good, you I've good. never directed a hundred million dollar movie, but if someone asked me to today, I'd say yes. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'll figure it, it out it, when I get there. It's because you've, you've built that muscle all yeah. the time to yeah. just say yes and make it happen. Say yes and figure it out and ask for help when you need to ask for help. Like, yep. I design tours, and there's a lot of things in engineering I'm still learning. Every time I do a new tour, yeah. there's a new challenge. Like, this last tour, like, we had weight issues. Yeah. And I'm like, weight issues? Well, I've never had weight issues before. And right. it's like, yeah, these venues can't hold this. And this show has to fit in every venue in the world. Yeah. You know? It's... Dude, the logistics of it is crazy. Yeah, it's nice. I, I just think, and it's beautiful. I think someone like Kenny Ortega or some of these big, these legendary directors, 
there's a little bit of um, not disconnects, not the right word, but it, what I'm trying to say is you coming, being a product of this program mm -hmm. at Monsters and coming back here, like, I just think it's it's beautiful for our community and the and the, the, the dancers and artists that get to come to Monsters and train with someone like you. Yeah. Because it is, I mean, we preach about it at A-list events all the time, you literally started in their shoes, yeah. right? Yeah. And for, the, for you to be able to stand where you are on this mountain of a resume and be like, no, literally, I just worked harder than everybody else. Like, yeah. I think it's it's super inspiring. Um, yeah, we, I used to just tell myself, you, gotta, you need to work harder than everybody you know. And if you're not, you, you might as well just quit at that point. And here he is. Yeah. And here he is. Any last words for the people out there? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think if, if, if Young you... Young aspiring artist, man. Like, I mean... I think if you... Man, if you really want to do something, like, I think you need to ask yourself, do you really, really want to do it? It's not... As much as like my resume looks like super cool, uh, whatever you make good money, all this mm -hmm. stuff like man, it is not just fun all the time. Like it is tough, it's hard. You go through a lot of politics with with the music industry in general. The money you make, you have to fight for every freaking dollar. Like mm -hmm. it's it's not the easiest thing. But if you, that's why I feel like you need to truly, 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 truly just be obsessed with what you your passion is, and then I think you'll be successful. And if you're not truly, truly passionate, then I don't know what to tell you. Right. Then yeah. you keep searching. Yeah. But no matter what that passion is, you keep that work, that hard work, yep. that, that drive, that hustle. Yo, sky's the limit. Yep. Nick DeMora, Thank it's you been an much. absolute pleasure. Thanks brother. for having me. Thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir.